in the name of Allah, the most merciful and beneficent. My dear viewers, Assalamu Alaikum. I am here with my lecture on the topic Birth and Rise of English Novel. I hope it is going to benefit you, especially the students of English literature. I hope you will like my video. Don't forget to press like button. Please subscribe this video, my channel, if you have not subscribed it before. I'll be grateful to you. Coming to the explanation of the topic, birth and rise of English novel. Now, how the beginning took place and in what form? Number one. Epics. Though English novel as a literary genre gained popularity in the 18th century, but its beginning can be traced back to 612 BC when the world's oldest literature, that is, Epic of Gilgamesh, was written. The world's oldest literature was the Epic of Gilgamesh, written by Sin Liki Yunenini. So, the world's oldest writer was Sin Liki Yunenini, who has written popular epic named as Epic of Gilgamesh. The major theme of this epic of Gilgamesh is man's desire for immortality. Since life as man knows it is not eternal, life is not eternal if he wishes to be remembered, it must be for kindness and love. If one wants to attain immortality, he can do it by his noble deeds, good actions. In this way, he will remain alive in the hearts and minds of the people. Otherwise, death is imminent. We have to face death. So, this was the theme of Epic of Gilgamesh. Then, after that, Homer, who lived in 700 and 800 BC, was the first notable poet or a literary pioneer who wrote the famous Greek epics, the Iliad and the Odyssey. He established the tradition of epic which had particular structure and subject matter. Now, Iliad is all about strength, that is physical strength. And the Odyssey is all about cunningness, power of cunningness over strength, over bravery over physical power. Iliad glorifies war. Glory of war. Theme is glory of war. While in Odyssey, the theme is cunningness over strength. If Iliad tells us the story of the rage of Achilles, the strongest hero in the Greek army, the Odyssey at the same time focuses on a man of twists and turns. Then, after that, in 1900 BC, Roman poet Virgil produced epic poems, Beowulf and Aeneid, with the later becoming a model for John Milton in 1608 to 74 in 17th century, John Milton's Paradise Lost was written on the model of Aeneid. 
which has been composed by Virgil. The epics were narrative verses telling stories of human encounters with monsters and accounts of accomplishments of heroic deeds in battlefields. Now, my dear viewers, you have seen the beginning of English novel which started with epics. The first ever epic in the history of English literature was written by Sin Liki Yunini and he wrote Epic of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh was a powerful king who enjoyed limitless power but he wanted immortality. He wished to have eternal life. And the theme of the epic is if man wants to become immortal, he must work hard, he must show noble deeds, good nature, he must work for humanity. In this way, he can live forever in the hearts and minds of the people. He can achieve eternity by doing good deeds. After Gilgamesh, we have two more Greek epics, the Iliad and the Odyssey. These two epics were written by Homer in 700 to 800 BC. It was Homer who established the tradition of epic which had particular structure and subject matter. In 1900 then, Roman poet Virgil, now three eminent writers, Sin Liki Yunini, who wrote Gilgamesh, then Homer, who wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey, and then Roman poet Virgil, who wrote epic poems Beowulf and Aeneid. And Aeneid became the model for John Milton to write his Paradise Lost. These epics were narrative verses telling stories of human encounters with monsters and accounts of accomplishments of heroic deeds in battlefields. So these epics dealt with wars. These epics dealt with bravery, courage, physical strength encounter with monsters, giants, like supernatural forces. These were the major themes of these epics. Now, when you start writing, the beginning of the novel or the birth of novel must remember to mention these epics and the famous writers of Greece. Now, after the epics came a new form of literature called the romances. After these epics, Greek epics, then emerged a new form which was called romances originating in France in the 12th century. In 12th century, France originated, the writers in France, they originated, they created new form of literature which they called romances. It was also popularly known as chivalric romance or medieval romance. Having flourished in the medieval times or medieval age between 1000 AD to 1450, AD. So, these, this form of literature dealt with the medieval romances or knights going on errands or fighting, etc. The scholars deviated from the tradition of epic by choosing subjects such as bravery, honor, adventure, and courtly love with unique features of using magic, 
spells and enchantments in the romances to arouse curiosities and interests in the readers according to abrams 1995 romances were first written in verse but later in prose as well one of the notable english romance is mallory's morty d arthur written in prose in about 1470 which accounted the legend of king arthur and his knights of the round table here the knights the soldiers the knights of the round table they renew their oaths to follow the code of chivalry as proclaimed as proclaimed by king arthur they have to follow the codes of chivalry chivalry includes showing mercy fighting for good and protecting ladies whenever they meet they may be in harm so this is a code that is meant to govern the knights actions throughout this uh, piece of literature mallory collected stories contrast the results of following the code of chivalry with what happens when a knight breaks that code or succumbs to temptation sir gawain for instance refuses to grant mercy to a man who asks for it thus he breaks the part of the code and accidentally kills the lady now carrying the shame of this act with him for the rest of his adventures so this knights of the round table deal with some codes of conduct now coming to geoffrey chaucer used both verse as well as prose in the canterbury tales among the 24 stories included in the canterbury tales two stories the tale of the malibus and the parson's tale were written in prose form he had also included a romance that is the knight's tale however it was chaucer's long poem troilus and cressida written in about 1380 which introduced new characteristics of literary tradition with the use of plot and conversations in the poem Chaucer gave a new turn to fiction for social and religious aspects of life were portrayed in the stories unlike far fetched realities of romances now see geoffrey chaucer he deviated from the realities of romances he gave a new turn to fiction for social and religious aspects of life were clearly portrayed in the canterbury tales then coming to another famous italian writer, writer that is beccaccio even before mallory and chaucer beccaccio 1313 to 1375 an italian author had already started to write in prose in 1350 beccaccio produced prose tales of amorous adventure that is the d cameron that's why italy is considered as the home of novel and chaucer was highly impressed by the beccaccio style of storytelling i hope this is clear to you first of all epics then come romances and then prose prose form started developing with geoffrey chaucer and beccaccio 
Now, after epics and romances came burlesque and picaresque. The popularity of the romances remained in vogue till 1600 when a new literary style in the form of burlesque came to existence. The literal meaning of burlesque is exaggerated comic imitation. Burlesque means exaggerated comic imitation. The writers wanted to mock and bring fun out of serious literary matter. For instance, Cervantes made fun of the medieval romances by writing the famous Don Quixote. Unlike the original romances in which the knights fought with giants and dragons to save damsels in distress, his knight, Don Quixote, fights with windmills which he sees as giants bringing laughter to the readers. Now these burlesque new form of literature it was a satire on the romances, romantic stories of the previous times. Here, in this, the hero, the knight, whose name is Don Quixote, he fights with windmills and imagine these windmills as giants, supernatural beings, so bringing laughter to the readers. Alongside the burlesque's literary style came the picaresque tale. Alongside the burlesque literary style came the picaresque tale, which was already in fashion in Spanish literature since the anonymous publication of Lazarillo de Tomes in 1554. The word picaresque was derived from Spanish word picaro, meaning a rogue. In a picaresque tale, the main character is a rogue or rascal who goes on an adventure and leads his life by his wits. Now again, you know, uh, these are the adventurous sort of stories or um, these are epics, mock epics. Coming to prose works, in 1688, a short prose work titled Orunoko or the History of the Royal Slave written by female author Ephraben in 1642-89 was published. The History of the Royal Slave by the first female author, Ephraben. Ben was influenced by the quest of knights in chivalric romances in which a knight goes in pursuit of his lady love, overcoming dangers and the difficulties. Orunoko was a prince who goes on a visiting mission of his deceased army general's daughter, following which they fall in love. However, soon he meets with hurdles planned by his king who blocks his marriage. The story was constructed in a form of biography following a linear plot. So Ben contributed to words depicting the truth of life since it was a biography. The history of the royal slave was, a, was the first biography, so it definitely depicts the truth of life. I must explain here what is a linear plot. Linear plot consists of a series of events that have a clear beginning, middle and end. The story unfolds in a chronological order which means they are told in the order they happened. Two or more plots that occur at the same time and intersect throughout particularly at the climax. 
this is called a linear plot and it was clear in Ben's writing in the history of the royal slave. I hope burlesque and picaresque, the new literary styles, they are clear to you. And then the prose works, the history of the royal slave in which the writer got an achievement that she depicted the truth of life and the story was in a form of biography and it followed a linear plot. Another work of prose was produced by Ben's contemporary that is John Bunyan who published The Pilgrim's Progress in 1678 and the life and death of Mr. Badman. Along with John Bunyan was the contemporary of Afra Ben. John Bunyan's famous piece of literature was The Pilgrim's Progress written in 1678 and the life and death of Mr. Badman written in 1680. Pilgrim's Progress was the best seller during that time for every household owned a copy of it. It is religious allegory telling the story of a Christian. So it was a religious allegory telling the story of Christian who undertakes a pilgrimage from his home in the city of destruction. City of destruction means the world to the celestial city that is heaven. So pilgrim's progress is a religious allegory. Coincidentally, the elements of modern day novel such as settings, Characters, conflicts were used well to present the journey of Christian. The ideas of repentance, of faith, of resisting temptation and of perseverance that Christian goes through in the story are the elements of the modern novels such as beginning, conflict, the rise in action, fall in action, and resolution. So all the elements of the modern novels could be found in the pilgrim's progress. Provided an important model for storytelling with vivid characterization and recording of dialogue which influenced a lot of later novelists. Thus, at the dawn of the 18th century, the foundation for the development of novel as a new genre of literature was well established, paving way for the rise of the novel. I hope the beginning of the novel and the history is clear to you. First of all, we started from the epics, then romances, then prose, and burlesques, picaresques, then coming to uh, biography, biographies, and the last one is the Pilgrim's Progress and the Life and Death of Mr. Badman, which had all the elements of the modern novels present in it. Therefore, we can say that novel did not take birth in the 18th century. It took birth since 612 BC with the world's oldest piece of writing that is the epic of Gilgamesh 
Bicene Liki Yunenini. But the novel took its rise. It rose in the 18th century with the modern novelists. Therefore, at the dawn of the 18th century, when 18th century was about to begin, the foundation for the novel had already been established and it paved the way for the rise of the novel. Now, another topic, rise of novel in the 18th century. Majority of the literary critics attribute 18th century as the time period in which novel took its birth, subsequent growth and development. Now, majority of the literary critics say that the real form of novel took its birth in the 18th century. Then it its growth and then it developed afterwards. With adequate literary predecessors such as Bunyan, Afraben, Chaucer, Mallory, Cervantes, Boccaccio and numerous other writers of the 17th century, the 18th century writers availed opportunities to further experiment and produce novel as a literary genre. Now see, but the matter of fact was that. What is the matter of fact? There were sufficient predecessors of English novel or the writers, for example, Bunyan, Ben, Chaucer, Mallory, Cervantes, Boccaccio and numerous other writers in the 17th century. They existed in the 17th century while the 18th century writers, they availed opportunities to further experiment and produce novel as a literary genre. Further, the increase in literacy rate, industrial revolution, rise in the middle class and coming up of libraries created favorable situations for the rise of the novel. In the new form of literature, namely the novel, the construct of the story departed from the romance and attempted at verisimilitude, depicting the pragmatism and morality of the middle class people. Now, this novel, 18th century novel, has its own characteristics. It totally deviated from the theme of romance and it came to focus on pragmatism, reality and morality of the middle class people because middle class began to rise in the 18th century. Alexander Pope's dictum, the proper study of mankind is men influenced the interest of the people to study human character. Now, the, this was the distinct feature, characteristics of, characteristic of the 18th century novel that it is the study of human nature, human character and very close to reality. Thus, 18th century novels explored human characters with the novelist creating real-life characters in their novels unlike giants, dragons and super characters in the romances. Now, they totally deviated from the imagination. Supernatural beings like giants and dragons and uh, heroes uh, like that, super superficial, uh, superficiality. They ignored superficiality and they focused on reality and the human nature in the pieces of writing written and published in 18th century. Coming to the factors that influenced the rise of the novel. Number one, industrial revolution. 
one of the major factors that contributed to the rise of the novel is the development in industries with machinery work could be done faster and people could get more time for rest and leisure time during which people resorted to reading novels now with the industrial development in fact people raised their standard of living most of their work was done by machines so people found leisure time spare time free time for reading novels printing press were available for production of multiple copies at cheaper rate even low income people could afford to buy and read books unlike in the past when only aristocrats were the reading public now common people with even low income they became interested in writing these pieces of literature besides variety of reading materials such as newspapers novels and magazines were made easily available due to printing press and we remember here the gutenberg's printing press it brought tremendous revolution in the in europe the newspapers and magazines helped develop the habit of reading which ultimately led people to start reading novels some of the novels were also published in magazines increasing the access to novels besides the book form material development paved the way to the rise of middle class who created demand in the reading materials for they had plenty of leisure time with manual work being done by machines people could get a lot of free time for reading further they had desires to read about their everyday experiences why they were more interested in the 18th century pieces of literature because they were close to reality and people were eager to know about their day to day experiences which prompted authors such as daniel defo samuel richardson and henry fielding to write prose fictions depicted depicting real life experiences so the first factor which influenced the novel in the 18th century was industrial revolution which promoted english novel second is decline of romance and drama since romances were mainly suitable to be read by elite aristocratic or noble families it could not sustain the readership the common people got bored with romances for they had no relevance of any sort to them in addition because people became you know realistic with machine age people became logical people uh, wanted to do reasoning they wanted to find facts behind every happening they became educated they were no more ignorant they were no more living in dark ages so the stories themselves being centuries old were no longer of any interest to the people the settings in which the stories in the romances took place were also unrealistic therefore romances as a literary genre started to decline people started to take interest in the contemporary issues unlike romances the novels were written in first person making it appear more personal and recent with ordinary characters that the readers could relate with novels were written, were uh, written in first person and the reader the one who reads the novel could relate himself with the real life characters decline of drama was also one factor that prompted the rise of novel in the 17th century during the rule of cromwell theaters were banned which were famous in elizabethan times 
they were totally banned so there were no choices left for the people moreover novel could reach vast vast audience when theater could only reach to limited audience when drama came back with the restoration age it could not establish its essence since novels got well established then even when drama came back in vogue during the restoration age even then it could not gain that much popularity because novels were well established by that time the third element which was responsible for the rise of novel in the 18th century was the rise of the middle class one outcome of industrial revolution was the rise of middle class the growth in industries brought about unprecedented corresponding growth with trade and commerce the people were increasingly becoming wealthy with even poor people of lower rank being able to raise their status in fact people wanted to raise their standards of life feudal system was already abolished from europe everyone wanted to explore new world to raise his lifestyle the standard of his life therefore the additional newly attained middle class status this group of people started behaving like the tradition traditional landed gentry demanding books to read further with improved living standard many including both men and women could acquire education and be able to read so women readers increased with greater leisure time with the rise of middle class and it was a fashion for high status women to remain engaged in reading literature it became a fashion to have book in one's hands further the new group of middle class people did not like the traditional medieval stories of the knights the rising middle class people demanded a new type of literature which conformed to their temper and taste and took little interest in romances thus the novelist wrote about common people revealing the psyche of the middle class in their novels for example defoe's robinson crusoe richardson's pamela and fielding storm jones were appealing to the readers coming to the last one that is mobile libraries it was a great revolution at that time in the field of literature that the start of mobile libraries facilitated the increase of reading public reading was promoted by providing easy access to books with books being brought to the homes if people joined the mobile library as members women readers benefited a lot since they used to stay at home and exchange books after they finish reading one from the mobile library they were the members of this mobile library they used to take books read them and exchange with the other next time though industrial revolution decline in romance and drama rise of the middle class and mobile libraries played significant role in the rise of the novel four authors again daniel defoe richardson fielding and stern took the novel to the highest point of glory these were the elements responsible for the rise of english novel in the 18th century now who were the pioneers of english novel in the 18th century daniel defoe he was born in london he was a merchant manufacturer public official and an editor before becoming a writer at the age of 58 Robinson Crusoe was his first book which was published in 1719 followed by Moll Flanders in 
Defoe is considered to be the first true master of English novel. You remember this? Daniel Defoe, the first true master of English novel, it was he who introduced the journalistic first person narrative, creating fiction to be a fact to the readers. He was the first writer to have introduced the technique of realism. Though the novel had no real plot, but just an account of chronological sequences of events. Now, Baker, a literary critic, considered Robinson Crusoe to be the first modern novel. So, Defoe is also called the founder of the modern novel. However, some critics have categorized Defoe's work as work of romances since the element of adventure and crime dominated. Still, later novelists who wrote autobiographical novels were influenced by Defoe's style. Secondly, now Daniel Defoe, you need to remember the famous book of Daniel Defoe that is Robinson Crusoe. And Defoe is considered as the first true master of English novel. He is also called the founder of English novel as well. Samuel Richardson. Samuel Richardson was born in 1689 in Derbyshire in London. He worked as a printer of the journals of the House of Commons and law printer to the king. During his youthful stage, he had experiences of writing a love letter for three girls through which he understood the ways of femininity and utilized the same knowledge. Now see, it was his personal experience. Epistolary novel, Pamela or Virtue Rewarded. These were the famous novels, Pamela and Virtue Rewarded, published in 1740. Richardson believed that the novelist had dual purpose of writing novels. And what are they? To inform the readers and impart morality. The whole of the novel of Pamela or Virtue Rewarded is the exchange of personal letters between the girl Pamela and her parents. The narrator, Pamela, a servant girl employed in a rich landowner, informs her parents through a series of letters how she maintains her virtue amidst her employer's inappropriate advances until he proposes a marriage. Richardson had been credited to have created novel of character by exploring the psychological development in Pamela. In contrast, Defoe explored the physical development of character in Robinson Crusoe as well. Clarissa or the history of young lady and the history of Sir Charles Grandison were additional novels Richard, written by Richardson in same epistolary mode. He influenced and popularized the feature of sentimentality in English novels. I must tell you here, epistolary, literally, it means in the form of letters relating to the writing of letters. Now, he influenced and popularized the feature of sentimentality in English novels. Coming to Henry Fielding, another famous writer, Fielding is considered as the father of English novel. He was influenced by Picaresque tradition of writing. Picaresque satire, making fun of something, exaggerated uh, imita comic imitation. He is known for the novels such as Shamila, Joseph Andrews and Tom Jones. He popularized the aspect of realism, characterization and craftsmanship of novel. 
through his novel he presented a true and realistic picture of human nature fielding's first novel was shamila written as a parody to richardson's pamela for he considered it to be hypocritical morality in doing so he popularized comic novel he continued to mock at richardson's pamela by presenting a contrasting situation with a young man joseph being pursued by a rich lady in joseph andrews fielding thus laid foundation for comic novels and lawrence stern Lawrence Stern was born in 1713 at a place called Clonmel in Ireland. He graduated from Cambridge and became a priest. Stern's approach to writing novels was far different and unique compared to his contemporaries. He experimented writing novels in a different style rather than the conventional method with beginning, middle and end. In his novel Life and Opinions of Tristram Tristram Shandy Gentleman published in nine separate volumes between 1759 to 1767 Stern employed autobiographical but non-linear narrative techniques by frequently skipping and jumping ahead of time and shifting back in time creating fragmented fragmented narration The main character or the narrator Tristram Shandy is born only in volume 4 unlike his contemporaries who had definite plot structure beginning middle end Stern's novel had no definite plot instead it begins in the middle get intercepted with devices such as digressions humorous reflections and deliberate blank pages kept in the middle of the story for the readers to fill in and respond therefore tristram shandy does not satisfy the usual expectations of how a novel should be organized however stern introduced a method of progression by sensory suggestion and momentary reaction to immediate experience which influenced modern writers such as joyce and wolf who used stream of consciousness as narrative technique these were the major writers of the 18th century other important authors tobias smollett he was an influential novelist of the time He was known for writing satire and describing the familiar scenes, follies, foibles, knavery for the ordinary life. He also used picaresque style in his novels, Adventures of Roderick Random. And Jonathan Swift, he is also very famous for his satire and allegory, A Tale of a Tub. and gulliver's travel were both alleg- allegorical novels swift introduced the use of the story of fantasy as a satire to reveal weakness in the society through his novels and what are the key features of 18th century novels the writers of the 18th century bo- brought out realism the novels were instruments to explore and represent the reality of the society the authors used very similitude with books imitating the real life of the people the use of first person narrative technique created the element of realism further unlike the romances characters in the novels were ordinary men and women with setting familiar to the readers in addition the focus of the protagonist was given on middle class people the purpose of the novel was mainly to promote virtuous character in people just as richard son did some authors such as swift and smollett used satire and allegory to point out the vices in the society 
the pioneer novelists contributed unique aspect of novel for example fielding popularized epic novels richardson with epistolary and sentimental novel defo with realistic novel swift with satirical and philosophical novel and stern with experimental novel thus 18th century novelist gave the novelist of the time fresh avenues and flexibility for writing novels without having to follow established tradition as classical writers were bound to it was an age of revolution and experimentation of writing novels which promoted further experimentation and creativity giving rise to sub genres or different genres of novel in the post 18th century this was all about the beginning and the rise of english novel along with the famous writers of the 18th century and what are the key features of the 18th century novel i hope you have liked my video and i have uh, tried my level best to make it uh, easier for you and uh, depicting different stages of novels please don't forget to like share subscribe my channel i thank you all